So I'm a cosmologist, which means that uh, I'm interested in studying the origin and evolution of the universe. There are different types of cosmologists. There are theoretical cosmologists who work uh, with pencil and paper or chalk and, and a blackboard and a computer. There are observational cosmologists who are people that uh, either go to the telescopes or receive data from, say, space missions or from uh, other telescopes, analyze them. And there are people that work in between that can deal with the data and analyze them and can also talk to the theorists and try to make the connection between the two. And I'm more in this third class of, uh, of cosmologists. In uh, their daily life, cosmologists are like any other person, except for the fact that we are really passionate about our work and we are dealing with very big and grand questions, which doesn't mean that we can easily find an answer to those questions, but we are dealing with those questions. And this means that our brain really never stops working. And so you can find yourself doing some of your daily activity, I don't know, taking some public transport or cooking and you know in the background your brain keeps working and then sometimes you have to stop everything and go and write down a new idea before you forget about it. But apart from that we're like anybody else. The last 12 months has been particularly exciting and energizing for any cosmologist. And this is due to the announcement of uh, two important results. First, the announcement of the Higgs boson at the CERN laboratory, and I'm sure you will hear more about that. And then a few months ago, the announcement of the uh, publications of the results of the Planck satellite. Uh, the CERN announcement, the announcement of the discovery of the Higgs boson confirms that there are these quantities called scalar fields, and they are not just part of equations written on somebody's blackboard, but they are real things that have been seen in an accelerator. On the other hand, Planck has given us uh, the full sky, biggest resolution, high fidelity map of the earliest light we can see after the Big Bang, what is called the echo of the Big Bang or the cosmic microwave background. And you may think that these two, which we, we recognize as our breakthrough, may not be related because one has been done from a satellite that is millions of kilometers away from Earth peering into the deep sky and try to avoid anything that we know of, like galaxies and things like that. While the other discovery has been done underground in an accelerator. So how has this, these two things connected? Well, it turns out that to describe the world and the universe as we see it, to understand how a almost completely uniform or you expect it to be uniform primordial soup has created all the structure we see today, galaxy, planets, us, animals, etc. Uh, you need a physical mechanism called inflation, which is an accelerated expansion that went on right after the Big Bang. And what physical mechanism could be driving this accelerated expansion? Oh, well, a scalar field. But before this year, nobody in nature had found a scalar field. So you can write it on a blackboard, but this doesn't mean that it exists. Galileo said that nature is written in a mathematical language. This is good and right and true, but this doesn't necessarily mean that everything that exists in mathematics, you can find it in the real universe. So this year, for the first time, something that existed in mathematics was found in the real universe. And it turns out to be extremely useful also to explain observations done peering into the deep sky.